Oh, lovely. There is some heavy energy here. I believe we need to do a channeling, so I'm going to get a message from your Divine Masculine. Let's... okay. <laughs> Let's bless and get started. We've got 5-5. Five, five. Change. Lots of change. Spiritual wisdom and regret. You know, this is interesting because I hear the... What is that called? The serenity prayer in my mind? Give me the serenity to accept the things... What is it? I don't remember right at the second. Focus on this. But I hear it in the back of my mind. It's like... There's also this other wisdom that says somehow it, it doesn't always apply or it doesn't always make you feel better. There, there's something. So Divine Masculine is in the process of just kind of seeking that that peace, but the deeper they go and the more wisdom they, they gain through their experiences or whatever downloads are coming in, the harder it is to feel at peace with themselves in this situation. They think about you doing this on your own, doing things alone, and I think it makes them feel even more alone because I don't think they know. You have to remember Divine Feminine. 90% of Divine Masculines will never know how much time we spent on tarot or whatever else you guys do or wash. Like, learning about them they have no idea they have no idea how much we care about them and they think that just because we're capable of doing it on our own and that they're supposed to be the, the masculine and the blah blah so they're supposed to be the strong one that oh my gosh but they have no idea that we ache for them as much as they ache for us oh, that's sad but intuition Hmm, something is telling them. Again, now we're getting what? Spiritual wisdom, intuition. Something in them knows that there is still a chance to connect. So they know that maybe maybe they know you love them or maybe they know that just maybe from even the movies, you know, okay, there's a chance that I can be with the person that I want to be with because... The movies say so. Whatever it is. For some reason, the Divine Masculine, in spite of this feeling of kind of about who they are and, and how this affected you and them and the relationship and, and their, their life in general, is also saying that there's this wisdom where I know we could still be together. Hold on. Before I reveal that, let me just do a quick shuffle of this. Luffsley. Okay. Oh, come on, oh. okay. So we have, I know what I'm doing, discontent. Okay. When we think about the Four of Cups, we see someone being offered love or a new chance, or a fresh start. But there's something where it's almost like the Divine Masculine is realizing that that is not the truth. Because they're looking ahead of them at those three cups, and they're thinking, I've been here before. This ain't my first rodeo, bub, and I know you're going to give me something in that cup, you're going to slip me a Mickey, I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to be... You know, I was going to try to say something slick, but I can't. So, all right. Divine Masculine has this sense of awareness that whatever is happening in their life right now, they are supposed to let it pass them by. Ugh. Because what's the most important, what matters most to them is you. Your unconditional love and how it makes them feel safe and, and whole and secure. Yeah, I need you. I don't care about whatever is going on here, what I need in my life is you, Divine Feminine. Actually, I do. I'm going to start here. Uh, ooh, I'm going to just pull random. I don't know why, but I feel like this one's supposed to be the first one. But maybe. Cancel that couple back. How many can I fit? Two. One more. This little guy wants to come out so bad. Fine, you can stay. Now let me get the other card set up. 
you know, I'm curious if there's anybody, again, willing to share. It is in our sharing that we experience the most growth and healing. So if you're willing, please do. What is it that your divine masculine needed to realize about themselves? That even you in loving them and not judging them understood had to change. I knew one thing that had to change is Mr. Lightwork's commitment to his shell of anger. Okay. He is such a sweetie pie. He is a big old teddy bear. He's actually very calm, very quiet 99% of the time. But when I first met him, he was very mad. And actually thinking about what was going on in his life, he had every right to be. But it wasn't about just him being angry. It was almost like he was doing it on purpose. Okay. He wanted the world to know he was not okay. It, now, as I say that out loud, that sounds like cry for help, right? But okay. So, well, I just realized they actually do that a lot, don't they? <laughs> this is so weird. So what is it for you and your divine masculine? What is it that you've recognized within them that it does have to go? Okay. There's all kinds of other things about them that might evolve or shift, but this cannot stay. So overall, what we need to know is that this divine masculine, remember what I just said, some things will need to change, and but some things can stay. The divine masculine that you knew will be oddly familiar <laughs> when you meet them again, even though they'll be so different. And it'll be a strange feeling because you'll see they still have a lot of the same ambitions, a lot of the same senses of purpose and, and goals. And you say, okay, I recognize that part of you. But the why, the how, everything's different. So we need to know that this divine masculine has shifted out of this phase of whatever this low vibe king stuff control freak energy was oh wow seriously ten of swords embrace the change expect things to get better they're a different person but i think that this change does um is accompanied by a deep sadness and i've explained to many of you before there is a lot of shame that comes with divine masculine awakening now, that shame does not belong there, but it is their way of processing, okay? It is their way of truly leveling up and becoming better, but also maintaining humility. So let's go ahead and get a clear understanding of, you know, we get 11 energy here, where this divine masculine has been on this path and what it is they want to express to you as they have these new realizations. So how are you feeling, Divine Masculine? Ugh. I'm feeling your love. So you remember when I said for some reason they know, they feel the connection, they know that it's still possible. Maybe it's the movies, maybe it's something else. But something taught them that whatever it is, is that they feel from you means that there's still hope. So Divine Feminine, yeah, let's get into this. I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling the complete abandon in which you give yourself, with which you love me. It's a wild, reckless love. I used to think you were crazy. But now that I'm letting myself feel this, it is pure. 
like drinking water from a spring on a high mountain. But it's deep. And it's pressure makes things perfect. And you knew and you saw me that I could be better. But you also knew that the better that I could become was already inside me. And so you loved me through it. And you made it clear who you were and what we were supposed to be together. But I was searching for a different kind of queen. One who let me control it all. One without dreams or goals. One without need to be loved. And I realized that <laughs> that feminine energy was no queen, but it was a little too late. You showed me that there's a thin line And waking up to this truth, this reality, I can see it now, and I crossed it, and I shouldn't have. I made so many mistakes, and so I wonder if this is just wishful thinking that you really would still love me even now. But all I can do is feel my way through and try to find that line and hope that when I step over, karma doesn't kick me back in the darkness. Because I've got plans. There are things that I believe we're meant to do and that only you and I can do. And I used to have plans for me. But no matter what I did, they never panned out. It wasn't until I started to see the holes and started to realize there was one common denominator that would fill them all. Too little too late, though. It was you. You are the yin to my yang, and, and somehow I missed it. What was right in front of me. Because I was so afraid. <laughs> I mean, what if you tried to take over my dream? To rule my kingdom? And now... I realize that I cannot live in the light without you. And this plan, everything has changed so much, but this plan still fits my, my vision of my future. It's just the path along the way is different. It's more fulfilling. It's real. And you misunderstood, but I didn't explain it. You didn't know that I always saw you in my future. I always saw you in my life. And it wasn't always going to be with you making sacrifices and feeling like it was one-sided. What bothers me is that I was so aware at that time that you would have to basically let me take advantage of you in order for me to get it how I wanted it. And I get now that I can't exist in your realm 
but cross that line into being a liar, a thief, a cheat. I always wanted to be my best self, but I never knew that this part of me, the one that connected with you in the first place, was separate from the part of me that wanted to be great. And that this part of myself wanted love more than greatness. I didn't, I, I thought they were the same person. And I thought that I could satisfy that person by doing one and then the other. But the truth is there is a, a stronger wolf inside me. And all this time that I've been just so self-deprecating, I thought, I don't know, I thought it was just how I talked or how everyone talked and then I realized it was me really truly being so disgusted with myself and not things I couldn't change and 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 not things that it would be so unfair to, to judge someone for but for my foolishness for my character for for my lack of character and what you never knew was that the you that I was when I was with you was not the you that I was everywhere else. I was the other side and the other extreme. And whenever I noticed myself slipping into that, that feeling of safety that you give me, <laughs> I ran for the hills. There's so much that happened between us that you thought was indicative of how I felt about you, but it's not. I've just been so wrapped up in myself and then trying so hard to fulfill my plans. And now I just, I wish that I hadn't have done this to us. And I wish that I'd listened to this part of myself that was speaking so clearly. And the worst part is, is I, I was confused, but I didn't know it. And I just look back and I'm disgusted. But what I can tell you is it won't happen again. Something in me is aware now. And I can't do this again. I can't, I can't sit here in this pain. I can't sit here in this place, being this person, feeling so small by my own hand, by my own doing. I can't keep accepting less than what I deserve. So I won't. I'll fly instead. And I know the truth now. Now that my intuition has opened my eyes, now that the spiritual wisdom has come, I see the truth, the greater truth about myself and about you and about who we are and what we're supposed to do together and about why you've always been the way you've been with me. At some point, I need to get to the bottom of how I got so dumb because as I look at this, I don't even understand. It's, it's so obvious to me now. But that's besides the point. If I focus too much on the heaviness, 
Instead, I have to focus on what matters, what stands, and that's the plan. And what I need to know from you is, are you going to be mine? Are you willing to stay with someone, to love someone, To be with someone like me, even if there is a hard road ahead, even if something bad happened, or even if we weren't supported or loved, if we had to do it alone, because I have to be real and tell you I wouldn't not after seeing who I used to be and how I used to be, I wouldn't put up with it. Not another minute. But you're different. You're better than me. That's why I need you. You are the light to my darkness. And I can't do this without you. I want you in my life because I'm in love with you and I always have been but back then I was too stupid to admit it too foolish to just let things happen I was so determined that I almost lost you But I know that you're not me. And I know that I could give you everything I ever owned. And you'd never hurt me. You'd never stab me in the back. Even though I don't deserve it. Even though I've been such a fool. I hope that you can forgive me and that you see that beyond the ridiculous and beyond my very dumb decisions. That there is a spiritual reason for us to be together. One that makes sense. And one that demands that we return to each other at once. Because I can't be apart from you anymore. I'm tired of being sad. I just want to be happy. And it doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing, as long as we're together, I'm happy. I feel good to admit that. I hope it's not too late. Okay. Um, if you're new and you want more channel messages like this, subscribe. Um, check out my website if you want to work together. I'm going to get going. Love you guys. Peace.